Now we're in Psalm 37. Psalm 37 verse 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 19. Look what it says here. And as you're joining in, share me all over. Share me on uh, Facebook. Share me on Twitter. Share me on Instagram if you can. Everybody, as you're joining in, just share me all over if you can. Let's get the gospel out. Psalm 37. Look at verse 19. It says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Now, let's read Psalm 37, verse 19, one more time. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Look at what the word of God is saying here. It's talking about the days of famine. Now, the days of famine, it means that provision, money, all of those uh, materialistic things is going to be scarce, uh, shortened. Um, is not going to be abundance. You see this? It's not going to be a lot. It's not going to be an overflow of this. Now, I want you to also remember this, that it says the days of famine. Now, look at this. It's, it's deciphering the days. The days. The days. So these days, they are contrary to, to the day of the Lord. Remember, uh, David kept saying, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Well, this day is opposite from the day that the Lord has made. Meaning this is two systems. The days of famine is what people are in because of dishonor. But the day of the Lord is what the honorable are in because of their honor. Now, let's look at this right here. I'm in Psalm 37, verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Do you know the evil time, meaning that this time was the time that God wanted you to redeem? Remember, he said, redeeming the time for the days are evil in Ephesians. Well, this time here, this time is dealing with Things occurring to you that are not really supposed to happen. The will of God not happening. Now, I want you to join this scripture together, though, because in verse 19, there's a reason why it talks about the evil time. Then it talks about famine, which shows you that an evil time affects finances. An evil time affects finances. Remember this, our evil time affects provision. It affects um, substance. But the Lord said, in the days of famine, you shall be satisfied. Now, I want you to see this. It didn't say sustain, it said satisfied. So if there's a famine, and there is a shortage of all materialistic possessions. And God is saying you shall be satisfied. Not sustained. Because if you sustain, that means that you got just enough to make it. You got just enough so that you don't get taken under. But the fact that you're satisfied, it means that what you want is being given to you. But how is that happening in the days of famine? Now, says, I want to say something powerful to you, and I want you to catch this and say, I received the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Christ. Remember, first John says that the Antichrist is already in the earth, the spirit of Antichrist. There's many Antichrists in the earth right now. Now, watch this. Who is really the one that is called the Antichrist? And what does that really mean? It means that this person is going to oppose or be against or fight against the anointing. That's why I didn't say anti-Jesus or anti-Holy Spirit. It didn't say anti-Word of God. It says anti-Christ 
Because the Christ, now watch this here. I want you to hear this. The Christ means the anointed one. Now, I, I, I want you to remember this, that this spirit is a sign to fight against anointed ones. The man of God. Now, I want to take you to another direction because then it is uh, the anointed one and his anointed. Now, I want to give you this revelation. Remember what first John tells us that it is um, the anointing that teaches us all things. So the fact that there is an antichrist, it means that this spirit is set to teach you another system. A system other than what the Christ was teaching you. Oh, my carapa. See, the anointed one was sent to teach you. And everybody has an anointed one. If you are, 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 are a child of God, God going to send you an anointed one. That's going to be a Christ. That's going to be someone that is sent to teach you. So when we deal with the spirit of Antichrist that's in the earth, it means there is another spirit that's sent to teach you stuff other than what the what the anointed one is teaching you. So, so that's why you got to be careful of social media and, and things that, that uh, try to defy truth and, and, and uh, try to uh, uh, position your mind into the system. Because the mark of the beast, these people are being marked because they're doing what Cain did in Genesis. Cain received that mark after he went against a Christ. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Cain had to go against Abel. Abel was an anointed one. He was the anointing flowing in the earth. Because the father had taught him how to sow. The father not only taught him how to sow, but the father taught him how to reap. And so seed time and harvest was taught to Abel by God himself. His daddy couldn't teach him because his daddy had fallen. Babylon has fallen. It has fallen. In Genesis and Revelation, it deals with, uh, in Genesis, it deals with the falling of man. In Revelation, it deals with the falling of the system of man. Because God created him to be a, God, God created him as man for him to learn how to become God. But people that have been called to be gods are leaving God to become man. Man, you're going to have to watch the replay. I don't want to go back, man. I ain't trying to. I don't want to go back. I want to slow down. I don't want to say that twice. And so that's why God was teaching Adam how to name the animals and how to sow and how to reap and how to create. Because he was teaching him how to be a god. He made him as man so that he would um, he would step into all the different learning materials and mantles and he would graduate and go from glory to glory and faith to faith. So I want you to see this. So now when we deal with the spirit of Antichrist that's in the earth, it's going to go against anointed ones. So so. That's why the word tells you that by a prophet was Israel brought out by prophet was Israel preserved because Pharaoh was the Antichrist. <laughs> so Moses came teaching the children of Israel something else. But the children of Israel still fell. You know why they fell? Because they had the mark of the beast. They had the mark of the beast. And so, 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 so the anointed one was Moses. And so he was sent to bring them out of that system. Are you, are you hearing me? 
So hereby you understand what has been going on in 2020 as well. That's why there, there are reports coming in. There's people trying to teach you what you should do, how you should think, where you should go, how you should respond, how you should live. And then we have the anointed ones telling you what thus saith the Lord. See, the world is teaching people how to fear. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? But the anointed one is teaching you how to dominate, how to protect, how to guard, how to multiply, how to be fruitful. Because see, the Antichrist brings you the curse with the teaching that the Antichrist brings. But the Christ brings you the blessing. Saints, I want you to hear this, that um, what happened with Melchizedek was he was the Christ of that priesthood. So Melchizedek, supernatural priest right there, he's the Christ of that place while the Antichrist, the Antichrist is all of those systems, the Philistines. Um, Abimelech, all them different people, they are in alignment with that mark of the beast. Everybody is underneath that. Abraham is told by God, leave your father's house because the father house is of the mark of the beast. The father's house is of the spirit of Antichrist. But because Christ is raising up Abraham to be a Christ, that's why Jesus, when he came on the scene, he said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. That's what that's so. So 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 King Jesus gave an analogy about Abraham that Abraham was able to see him before he even showed up because Abraham is a Christ as well. So what God tells him to leave your father's house, because those are where the antichrists are operating. Ay, 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 Oh, Rama. Let me go stronger on here with, with more revelation because I feel such a strong anointing right now and the angel of the Lord just came to me. My angel Irene just showed up and just handed me a scroll. I'm ministering off of this scroll. So I'm about to say something that I never said before. I'm about to say something that I never said before off of this scroll. That bakasala. Ay, Aros. Uh, so here's what Arenas just told me. That when King Jesus went to Legion and he delivered Legion of all those spirits, he said that Legion was in a covenant with spirits of Antichrist. That's why he was functioning like the beast. None of them can restrain him. None of them could stop him. If they put chains on him, he would break it. He was in the cemetery. But he had the spirits of those that went against the anointing, the spirits of demons. So he has all this antichrist covenant operating in him. So he's a lunatic. He's deranged. He's crazy. When he starts to worship, now he gets free from all of the antichrist. Now watch this. The Bible says that they begged, they begin to make a ruckus because they wanted him to leave. Listen. They wanted him to leave the place. They wanted Jesus to leave the place. They wanted Legion out of that land. Why? Because that land was underneath the mark of the beast. The land was underneath the spirit of Antichrist. 
So all those people, they actually enjoyed seeing Legion in that predicament. So the Christ came and broke the spirit of Antichrist off of Legion. That's why Legion, even he wanted to leave the place and King Jesus told him to stay there. Why? Because he recognized. Now watch this. He recognized that those legions, those spirits of Antichrist was no longer his God, his master, his system. He had been set free. He had been delivered. He had been converted. You know, Colossians says that you can be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God and of the dear son of his love, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God and, and the dear son of his love. Colossians is dealing when we deal with darkness is really the spirit of Antichrist because darkness means that the information of God, the knowledge of God is not being revealed to you. When the light comes, it means that revelation comes. It is revealed to you. You can understand it. You can receive it. You can eat the manna of God. So, so what she said, the manna of God. I want to clarify that since we got grocery generation. <sighs> And so really to go from darkness to light, it means that you go from Antichrist to Christ. You go from not hearing the gospel to being a gospel carrier and releaser. It's a difference. So when we deal with that darkness realm, the darkness is really the spirit of Antichrist. The light is really the Christ. And so when the Bible said that Marvel and I, if the world hates you, why? Because the world is already underneath that spirit of Antichrist. Listen, somebody can't become in love with another man and they're a man without the spirit of Antichrist. Why? Because it goes against the anointing. The anointing never has flowed for two women to love each other. In the, in the realm of sexual love. Or two men to love each other in the realm of sexual um, activity. So when that happens, you see the spirit of Antichrist at work. Because it goes against what the Lord will teach you. So saints, I want you to see this. The same way if you go throughout your day and you don't praise God. Watch this here. The spirit of Antichrist is the only thing that can teach you not to praise God because the spirit of Antichrist don't praise God. So if you find your your gratitude leaving, your thankfulness leaving, your praise leaving, your celebration of God leaving, and you get so consumed with time and you forget to celebrate God for what he has done, everything, the spirit of Antichrist can creep in. Now, here's what happens. You won't even know it creeped in until... Something else may manifest. Maybe you speak wrong words. Maybe you connect with a wrong person. Maybe you 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 end up having a a a, a, a wrong a wrong a wrong occurrence on the street. You get in an accident. You get stopped by police, or something happens, and it quickens you to realize something is wrong. But see, that's how the spirit of Antichrist operates. It comes in and teaches you to do something else that's adversarial to your weapons. It teaches you another pattern of fruitfulness. Because saints, how many of you all know that even um, a person that's in darkness is still bearing fruit? So, so what King Jesus said, by their fruits, you shall know them, which means that their fruits will not always be of God. Even the, the, the fruits will be of the devil. So you have to remember that in Genesis, it was actually a tree. So this tree was not just a tree. It had fruits to it. 
So, so the tree was a subject. It was an option. It was a decision that they could have decided. It was a system. It was the beginning of the mark of the beast. It was the beginning of the Antichrist. Because when Adam was made, he was the Christ. He was the anointed one over all the earth. So when that woman came through, she was engrafted in to that same Christ. That's why her name was Adam. So watch this. For Corinthians to say that Jesus is the second Adam, that shows you that Adam was operating in being Jesus on earth. That's what he was doing. He was Jesus on earth. So the miracles came from who? Adam. The provision came from who? Adam. The weather came from who? Adam. The animals, their identity came from who? Adam. Saints, do you know that Adam not only named the lion the lion, he taught the lion how to be a lion. That's how powerful Adam was. Because he was the Jesus on the earth. Do you know that the tiger didn't know how to be a tiger? Until Adam taught the tiger how to be a tiger. The fish didn't know how to be a fish. Until Adam taught the fish how to be a fish. He not only had the name. But he had the functionality that the name brought. Saints that's the crazy thing. Because if you look at people. How many of y'all ever met religious people. That are always telling you the meaning of the name. Huh? Huh? Man, huh? We all have met the religious people always telling you all the meanings of their name. How many of y'all ever met people like that? They always tell you, my name mean this. My name, you know, my name mean this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Your name mean that, but that don't, I don't see that. I don't see that. that that's, that's a name. We need to see the functionality of that name come to pass. Since I remember one time, a long time ago, there was a guy. Because uh, I think I was in Decatur, Georgia at the time. And he was saying that his name is uh, Moses, right? <laughs> and the man Moses used to get his social security checking. And he used to smoke and bought. And, and the young girls used to come get their $40. Or uh, $41. Maybe it was, maybe it was, maybe add on a dollar so they could buy a canned soda. You know what I'm saying? Canned soda. And... And and he, and he and, and when he got religious, he would always come and say, you know, my name Moses, and it and it mean this, it mean that, and 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 I used to look at, I used to look at that man, and I realized that man using that name Moses as a form of credibility, and this man a liar, this man, this man, he he he. He not a wise man, he not a Jesus man, but he will always use the name. He will always use the name. And saints, I want you to hear this, is that that's the secret behind why the sons of Shiva, they tried to use Jesus' name, but it wasn't about using Jesus' name. It was about whether they came underneath the functionality of Jesus himself. Are you understanding this? Remember, I just told you how Adam, he not only named the tiger, he led the tiger in the, the tiger's functionality. He taught the bear how to be a bear, the lion how to be a lion, the fish how to be a fish, the eagle how to be an eagle, because Adam was all of that. He was their teacher. He was their prophet. Imagine that the first man was a prophet over the whole earth. The whole earth was designed to respond in submission to him. So imagine when the Lord gives you a name. There's somebody that unlocks that name in you. <laughs> you don't just have that name. There's somebody that unlocks that name in you. There's someone that causes that name to function. There's someone that makes that name active. There's someone, and, and it's always your man of God. It's always your Adam. It's always your prophet. Because that's how God gets the functionality to flow. 
That's how he gets the functionality of the flow. The name change, the name that God gives you in the spirit, it requires a prophet so that the functionality of that name can come forth. Now, I want to show you something so that you can understand this. In the Bible, Saul went from Saul to Paul. But then we also see that uh, Paul, Paul was told, or while he was praying, God spoke to Ananias, the disciple, and said, go lay your hands on him. And remember, he didn't want to go at first. He was like, no, no, no. Do you know who this is, Jesus? Do you know who this is, Jesus? And so, so maybe, maybe, um, maybe uh, Ananias was from Ghana or something like, do you know who this is, Jesus? Do you know who this is, Jesus? This is a mother suckers. <laughs> I'm sure that's what he said. They probably, they didn't have it in the text, correct? But I'm sure that's what he said. He told Jesus, this is a mother suckers. You telling me to go here, this is a mother suckers. He going to kill me. Isn't that crazy though how Ananias, he didn't trust Jesus. When Jesus told him to go, he didn't trust Jesus. Isn't that kind of crazy? Isn't that kind of messed up? That Ananias was supposed to be Jesus' friend. And when Jesus gave him instruction, he, didn't, he, he felt like Jesus needed to be investigated on. Saints, never let that be you. Saints, um, and look at the loving kindness of King Jesus. Do you notice that King Jesus still sent him and didn't really emphasize that? But King Jesus was hurt by that. Huh? Because you imagine the rest of that day when King Jesus thought about it, he was like, wow. And a nice show, so you, 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 you really did that? And so, people of God, you got to be careful of that in your life as well. When your thoughts, your words, your expectations, because worry is demonic expectation. Worry is demonic expectation. Worry is demonic expectation. And fear, uh, um, fear is how you worship Satan in the flesh. Fear is how you worship Satan in the flesh. Fear, fear. Even fear is the worship of the devil. It makes you worship the devil. So Ananias goes, but watch this here. His name is change, changing from Saul to Paul. But look, Ananias has to come and unlock the functionality of, 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 of Paul. Are you seeing this? Ananias has to come and unlock the functionality of Paul. And that's the glorious thing about Paul. When God gives you a new identity in the spirit, there is a man of God that unlocks that identity and makes it come out. See, he goes from Saul to Paul, but God don't just let him transition, transition off of prayer, off of fasting. Because he had to fast. He was on a forced fast because when Jesus knocked him out, he couldn't eat for three days. He couldn't see for three days. So all those things occurred, but the Lord didn't release him into being Paul. Ananias has to come and unlock the functionality of Paul. And so people of God, you have to think about this. That's why the man of God is so important because I come to unlock the functionality of who you are in the spirit. I come to bring out who you are in the spirit into the functionality realm. The fruitful realm, the fruitful realm, fruitful realm, the decision making realm, the visible realm, because you can have the the uh, the new identity because it says that you are a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become made new. But then the new creation requires someone that is creating your focus. I want you to see this. The new creation requires someone that is a divine creator in your world, your mental world. They are a divine creator in your emotional world. They, 
Remember everything that God created. Remember, he kept saying that it is good. You notice that, right? Every time he created something, he kept saying it is good. Why? Because this 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 is what you want to catch that everything that he was producing in the world was of goodness. It wasn't of evil. So every time he created something, it said they looked at it, and saw that it was good. He saw that it was not contrary to how he functioned. So when God makes you a new creation, he will connect you to a divine creator, your man of God. They create thoughts. They create focuses. They create instructions. They create, um, they create observations. If you ever around a man of God, you observe things differently. A man of God will open up your eyes to receive revelation. A man of God will open up your eyes to sow. A man of God will open up your eyes to pray. The man of God will open up your eyes to submit. And so now once there is a new creation in the person receiving Jesus, he assigns them a creator that designs your mind with their words. They speak the words of life so that you're, you can be spiritually minded, which is life and peace. Now, saints, I, I want to deal with this just real quickly for a couple of moments because Romans 8 talked about to be spiritually minded. Spiritually, spiritual mindedness, it says that the fruits of it is life and peace. And, you know, peace is wholeness. And life means that God will saturate you with his atmospheres, his ideas, his environment, his character, his uh, focuses. So imagine this. You can't be spiritually minded until the word is being preached to you. Because the words I speak to you, John 6, 63, are spirit and life. And so the word got to be preached to you so that you can receive the life of God, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to guard your heart and mind. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Psalm 37. Look at verse 19. This amazing stuff here. It says they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Do you know what they shall be satisfied means? You know what that means? It means that supernatural money is moving for you right now. Now, saints, within this is two systems. We see the mark of the beast system here because it says that they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. The evil time is where the mark of the beast, the, the spirit of Antichrist, it is successfully uh, roaming in the earth, establishing itself in the earth. OK, but look what it says that in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Sowers. Is what this verse is talking about. It's talking about sowers. It's talking about people that honor God. They will not be affected in their provision. They will not be affected in their living. They will not be affected in their vision. Nothing shall separate them from the love of God in Christ Jesus. This text here is dealing with the sower. It's saying that they shall be satisfied. Meaning that God not only shall give them what they need, but God shall give them what they dreamed of. This the hundredfold return. This is the same thing that happened in Genesis chapter 26 when Isaiah, I, Isaac received the hundredfold through sowing. Now, saints, I want you to see this, that Isaac did exact instructions. Isaac did the Isaac instructions. Everything that God wanted him to do, he did it. He obeyed God with the finances and he became a financial king. See, you'll become a financial queen. You'll become a financial king. The queen of Sheba was a financial queen. King Solomon was a financial king. And see, this text right here, Psalm 37, verse uh, verse 19, is talking about supernatural money moving. It's talking about the wealth power of God. 
is talking about financially, uh, uh, financially anointed vessels, financially anointed sowers. See, you, 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 you buy the oil of wealth through honor. You purchase the wisdom for wealth through honor. Now, let's go here. Because there's always an exchange. The exchange is always occurring for sowers to keep the mark of the beast from ever touching any area of their life. Physically, spiritually, mentally, financially. That's what the seed, the sowing does. It creates satisfaction in days of famine. Let's go to Psalm 37 verse 19 once again. In the days of famine, they shall not be satisfied. Satisfaction means that the father is going to the depths of your mind to supply what you imagine to you. Now let's go here. Let's go to verse 21, which is two verses after that. It says the wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. The righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Now, saints, I want to show you something that you never heard a day in your life. Mercy is opportunity. I want you to hear this. You never heard this a day in your life. I promise you. The uh, mercy is opportunity. So it says that the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Now it talks about giving and mercy in the same text and mercy represents opportunity. Now I want you to remember this, that when you are righteous, you know that your giving is producing opportunity. Your giving is birthing doors. See, when you are the righteous, you agree, you have a revelation, you have an understanding that my giving is birthing an opportunity for God to move. It's birthing an opportunity for King Jesus to possess me. It's birthing an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come up on me. Is birthing an opportunity for angels to minister to me. Is birthing an opportunity for Michael the Archangel to officially evict. If, if, if uh, officially evict Satan from my finances, from my mind, from my relationship, from my children, from my path, from my year, from my future, from my... See, the seed is the master of opportunities. The seed, watch this, the righteous showeth mercy. Showeth mercy. Showeth opportunities. So, so even when you are a giver, there is an authority that God gives to you while you're giving. For you to navigate opportunities. And how does that happen? You have a mouth that is your deliverer. Oh my karamanda kara. Your mouth can talk yourself into the doors of the spirit. That's why David even prayed, watch over the doors of my lips. The doors, the doors, the doors, the doors, the doors. Because the doors represented opportunities. So David was saying, make sure that I don't have none of my opportunities to go to places that you want me to go in the life of God. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. So in the lives of God, in one of those lives of God, there's eternal life. And so Jesus even said that by your words, you will be condemned or justified. But then we deal with the abundant life because now we deal with the fact that you are a prophesying spirit supposed to speak the blessing just like 
Moses spoke the blessing over the children of Israel and said, the Lord bless you and keep you. He make his face shine upon you. He lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious to you and give you his peace. Moses was told by God that when you speak this, you shall bless the people. So saints, uh, we see with King David that he revealed that uh, your, 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 your mouth is governing doors, is governing doors. Your mouth is the master over doors. And so when we see that the mouth is over doors, we, you realize that even when the Bible said knock and the door shall be open to you, it means that you sow because you can't knock without your hands. How many of you are ever knocked the door without your hands? If you knock it with your head, you're crazy. <laughs> you can't knock a door. You knock the door with your hands. And watch this. Your hands got to be balled up for you to knock the door. You got to knock the door like this. And this is the same position that you use when you holding something in your hands. So watch this, people of God. You knock into the doors of the spirit with sewing hands. But I want you to see this. That you knock and open doors in the spirit with your mouth hands. See, this abundance of life. Watch this here. Look what the word of God say here in Psalm 37. Psalm 37 verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek are people that have allowed God to teach them his ways. How to sow. The meek are sowers. The meek are sowers. Um, how do you know that the meek are sowers? Because you're inheriting things. And, and you're inheriting the earth. Watch this. In Genesis, God put Adam to sow. To sow. To replenish the earth. All right, watch this here. Okay, so Adam learned how to sow the earth bearing seed so that he can replenish the earth. The earth was the objective right there. Now look right here. The meek shall inherit the earth. So the meek are those that are learning how to sow. The meek are those that are learning God's ways of honor. They're learning God's ways of how to worship truly in spirit and in truth. And God is saying, if you learn this, if you become meek, I'll cause you to enjoy the earth. Your life on earth will be enjoyable. What the earth produces for you will be enjoyable. What you will taste and see that the Lord is good because of that meekness. Now, saints, I want to give you a revelation of meekness that I want you to keep. Meekness, meekness is the mentorship of sowing. I've never heard that a day in my life, but I love that boy. I hear God speaking that to me. If you take a note, write that down. Meekness is the mentorship of sowing. 